And then out comes William Regal. And Regal comes down to the ring. He introduces MJF. MJF comes out and he explains that Regal had emailed him after the firm attacked him and said that MJF had become weak. He was willing to help him learn how to be a true villain. And he said he should not grab the dynamite diamond ring, but he should grab the brass ring. And uh, he said he wanted MJF to use the knuckles, leave Moxie with an emotional scar. And this whole this whole segment, Regal said nothing. And he just so looked, here, here, he looked the sad and miserable out there the entire okay, time. Okay, so here, here's the thing. It's like it's like he never explained why he turned on Moxley. No, this was never explained. I mean, it was like this was like I'm waiting for this. This uh, I don't want to get into this segment, but I mean, well, we it, have to get into the segment. I mean, it's just like I'm watching this with with certain ideas of what they're going to do because they have to they have to explain this, and there's like. Okay, there's an explanation of, you know, it's like, of why he went with Max, I suppose, you know, but he never said any, he never said anything, you know, I mean, he sent him an email. Why would he send him an email? Did he explain why? He just did. Why did he turn on his guy? You know, what happened? You know, what's the deal with um, the Blackpool Combat Club? I mean, nothing. We, we, you know, it's like... This, this, and then, and then, of course, at the end. Well, Max hold on. Before on we him. get to the end, so, so, uh, MGF then reveals he's got a new belt, a Burberry belt that he's created for himself, yes. and he runs down the fake wrestlers. He talks about the bidding war of 2024. Hopes his belt will be a bargaining chip, and then he says, "I hope the highest bidders are the other con, Nick, and my boy Saint, Trips, Saint Nick." Why is yeah. he saying the highest bidder should be WWE? That's what he said, right? I just thought he just talked about, you know, it could be. I don't think he really, he said it might be, you know, but, you know, why did he bring them up? That's his gimmick. Um, you know, I mean, it, it. I don't like the gimmick that he wants to leave AEW. As world champion. Doesn't that make AEW seem like the minor leagues? Well, he wasn't so much saying I want to leave for WWE like he did before, which I thought was really bad. This was just like, I'm open to leaving. I'll, I, you know, it isn't like he said, I want to leave this place and go there. It was just like, um, you know, I may want to not leave it both is, places it is and go to possible. Hollywood. It is possible that I misheard him, but I could have sworn he said that he hoped the highest bidder was Nick Khan and Triple H. I may have misheard that. Yeah, no, I don't but think But one way or the other, he wants a lot of he, money. He, he did talk about St. Nick and Trips and his buddy Trips and um, I mean, I, 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 if it's my company, I would not allow it. He's trying to do it to get heat with the crowd. It didn't, you know, it's like, it didn't really work. I mean, it was just like the crowd, he was doing everything he could to get heat in this crowd. Just, it's like, you know, even at the end with, after every trick, I w looked at the crowd. And I mean, there were people booing him and there were people standing and clapping him. And it's just like, he's, he's. You know, I know he wants to be a heel, um, but man, you know what I mean? It's like um, they want to cheer him, and sometimes when you, you know. Well, here's the problem, Dave. Yes. So at the end of this segment, he does the whole promo, and then he wants to, uh, he gets the fans, you know, cheering Regal. This guy has done all this and everything like that. Let's, let's hear it for William Regal. And then he goes behind him, and he hits him from behind with the brass knucks. He knocks out William Regal. And then he said, you told me I had a lot to learn, but it was you who made a deal with the devil. And then he quotes the email from years ago saying, uh, you know, we're looking for the best, and, uh, and when you fit that criteria, you know, send me your stuff. And here's the problem. There's a lot of problems. Well, here's the big problem. When they did that original storyline— where MJF read the email and the email from Regal saying that, you know, we, uh, you know, we're doing a different sort of deal and uh, et cetera, et cetera. The fans totally got behind MJF as a babyface. And I had people tell me, they go, you know what? 
this was a heel promo, but the fans didn't get it. And I don't know if I don't know. No, no, what... no, 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 no. He was trying to turn. The idea was to turn babyface, but it was a fake babyface turn, and then turn heel at the pay per view. Okay, but but my point is, I had people when he did that promo who said that's actually a heel promo. Okay, you could Not... say it. It wasn't, but that wasn't the idea. Exactly. But it doesn't matter. The point is, the fans saw it as a babyface promo, and they Absolutely. got behind Max, okay? Yes. So when he, and and I know that Tony likes uh, the poetry of his storylines, and, you know, the payoff here is that he got to get his revenge on Regal and say the same things that Regal had said to him in the email. It all ties up and everything like that. But the problem is, There's so many when problems. he knocked out Regal, the fans were like, Great! He well, got no. his revenge on the evil corporation. He got one over on him in the end. No, they no, the, the, cheered the, him after that. There was some. There, they didn't cheer him, but they didn't. They did. Him. They cheered him. They was, cheered him when he he knocked out Regal. At first, they booed, and then when he read the line was, from the email, they was, all stood up and cheered. There was some cheering. There was some booing. There was mostly not a reaction. That was the sad part of this thing. This thing went seventeen minutes, and it was. It was tough, and it was long, and it was too long for this crowd, and it might have been too long for television. Maybe, you know, I mean, Max is a good minute-by-minute draw. Maybe it won't be. Maybe it'll come out good. But, but live, you know, watching this thing, it was just like they needed to do it in seven. This was way too long. And then at the end, it's like, you know, all the heat on Regal goes nowhere. I mean, I, I, I mean, I was warned by some people about this one, and boy, were they right. You know, it's just like this, just, you know, I mean, I don't know what's, you know, I know everyone's going to think that Regal's leaving, and, and he might be, you know. Um, this certainly looked like he was gone. Yeah, I don't know I if mean, he's gone or not, but given all the rumors and the angle here and carted away in the ambulance. Well, like, there's and stuff that there's stuff. Bleeding that from the mouth. There, there's stuff that I can't say, but... Um, you know, it's like, you know, I mean, whatever the, the three-year contract is, there's something up here, okay? Um, and uh, it is certainly a possibility uh, that that uh, he's going back. Um, and, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, so whatever that is, but it's like if he was going to do that, I mean, they put all this heat on him, went nowhere with it, then tried to use it to make Max more of a heel by turning on him. But he had just turned on Moxley. Literally, this was their first appearance together. Yeah. Since he helped him win, and then he turned on him and killed him. Which the people wanted Moxley to kill him anyway. They wanted so they Moxley were... to get his revenge, and instead MJF got his revenge from years ago, is what yeah. happened. Yeah, so Moxley never gets any revenge yeah. at all. And and he's gone, and then you put all this heat on him, and he's gone for I mean, he's certainly going to be gone for a while. You know, and now they, we have a very awkward storyline where Moxley, and this was from last week, actually. Moxley got turned on by Regal. Moxley wanted to kill Regal. Brian Danielson told him not to kill Regal. Brian Danielson is out there with Regal as he's being stretchered out. He gets in the ambulance with him and everything like that. I mean, how are Moxley and Brian going to coexist in storyline? I mean, there has to be an explanation for this, right? I hope so. I don't. I mean, I, I, I didn't. I didn't ask anyone because I didn't know that Brian Danielson was going to run in and s still be with the guy. Which I mean, sort of makes sense. And they even did the thing where he had one boot on just to make it look like it's real. That's something like that they would have done like forty years ago if it was George Scott or Roy. Shire. I mean, Brian played his role great. Yeah, but when it was all over, I was just like. What was the purpose of this? Like, put so much heat on a guy who's leaving. Moxley gets no revenge at all. Um, MJF tr is 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 turning heel on a guy who's a heel. So the fans are just all mixed up. And, you know, I mean, great, we got a new belt. I mean, I, I you know, I don't know. I was... Um... <laughs> I just did not like this segment at all. Um, 
you know, you know, I, I think if the, again, I think if this segment had been in Chicago last week with that crowd, I might have liked the segment a lot because it probably would have, the crowd probably would have gone nuts for everything, you know, both cheering and booing, but at least they would have gone nuts. This crowd did not want a long talking segment. They wanted, I think they kind of half ass wanted to cheer him. So he's doing all of the insults of the crowd to make sure that they don't. And instead of really booing him, they're kind of like, okay, you're playing heel on us. You know, and that's really what it was. It's like this crowd was like, okay, you're playing heel on us. And that's not that's not the thing that's going to work. If, if the crowd thinks you are playing heel, and I mean, God bless him. He will do everything, you know, on the Internet and 24-7. He's playing his role all the time, everywhere, trying to be, I mean, I on Twitter, just going out there trying to be heel, trying to be obnoxious, trying to get everyone to hate him. But... When you're, you know, again, fighting the audience, I mean, we've seen this with, um, you know, whether it was Steve Austin or Becky Lynch or a million people, um, when you fight the audience, even Ric Flair at times, and, um, you know, sometimes it works and you can make it work at the end, but, uh, man, a lot of times it doesn't, and, and, um, I'm not saying it won't. He's he's going to try really hard every week to insult the audience, and probably in a good city, it probably will work. But um, you know, the combination of of just the whole weirdness of everything, um, you know, turning a guy one week and then turning him back the next week, and then the other guy turning. They turn so many people, and people. That's the other thing. They turn so many people. They turn Joe. They turn. You know what I mean? They turn so many people so often. I mean, somebody remember I had in the Observer a couple, maybe a month or two ago, a list of like, you know, like 17 turns in like two, you know, in a month or two. And it's like, when you do that, the turns don't mean anything anymore because you just see them every week. And I mean, I don't even know, like, granted, like like the babyface heel thing, it's it's not as important. But, okay, so the elite were super babyfaces in, in Newark. They played heel in Chicago because they thought that that's what they should do and you know, probably were right. And then this week, I don't know what the hell they were. Um, they, oh, they tried were definitely, to be, They were all baby faces this week. Well, they well, jumped them. They jumped them before the match to play. Sure, heel. but I mean, you know, Penton and, and uh, Pac are both trying to use hammers, and Phoenix doesn't want to use the hammer. So, you know, Phoenix is clearly a baby face, and you know, I thought, yeah, but, but, I but thought the, the elite were clearly baby faces this week. Well, they, they I think they're going to be baby faces everywhere except uh, in Chicago. I I didn't uh, see them as baby. I just saw. Well, it as they a match. jumped him because they've been hit with a hammer twice in two straight matches. Of okay. course, they're angry at him. Okay. Well, That's when they I jumped out of it, when they jumped, they when they jumped him, they worked his heels. I mean, you know, it was like the cool spots were. Um, well, they all did cool spots. I shouldn't say that. Everybody did cool spots, um, but that was not a baby face heel match. You know, I mean, it's not like Pac didn't work as a baby face. I mean, as a heel. Um, Penta certainly didn't work as a heel. Phoenix certainly didn't work Penta as a heel. worked as a heel. He was trying to use the hammer. He was trying to use the hammer to cheat, and his brother stopped him, and then he shoved his at brother. The end, at the end, at the end, but the entire match he wasn't. Well, he the was entire working match, Penta's style, but he was supposed the to be The entire match, he was, he was he working the entire match until the finish as a baby face. So, but the match, that match worked because the people went for that match. With that match, people just wanted a great match. And uh, they didn't care about the babyface heel dichotomy anyway, so and they got a hell of a match, but but still, it's like, you know, you don't know, and I mean, it's sometimes that's good, and sometimes it's you know it's okay, but um, man, in that in that MJF thing um, done this week, I just thought that segment just, oh man, just so long, and and just hard. Man, that was hard. Randy, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, wrestle uh, load? <laughs> and Brian Hawks. I, I don't. That's what pretty got paid after a show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. It's Russell Cade. Oh, oh that good. makes more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's, he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh. I've never... I have... 
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.